Hare Krishna! So, we are continuing the book called Life Comes from Life by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Jai. And this is the 16th morning walk. Oh, and this is Shravanam Diaries Podcast. I'm your host, Sulalita Devidasi. We are completing the book today with the 16th morning walk. Recorded on December 10th, 1973, on the shores of the Pacific Ocean near Los Angeles. Srila Prabhupada is accompanied by Dr. Singh, Hridayananda Dasa Goswami, and other students. Section 1. The Meaning of Supreme Srila Prabhupada What is the meaning of supremacy in this material world? Why do you accept President Nixon as the supreme person within your state? Dr. Singh Because he has some power. Srila Prabhupada Yes. And why is he supreme? Because as the government's number one servant, he gets the highest salary, has all the best facilities, and his order is final. Dr. Singh He has the power to convince others. Srila Prabhupada No, you may not agree with him, but because he is supreme, you have to accept his order. That is his position. It does not depend on your acceptance or non-acceptance. That is the meaning of supremacy, is it not? The Vedic literature says that one who has the symptoms of supremacy is fortunate. The supremely fortunate person is God. Lakshmi Sahasrashatasam Brahmasevyamanam Quote, He is served by hundreds and thousands of Lakshmis or goddesses of fortune. Unquote. Brahma Samhita 5.29 Here on this planet we are begging a little favor from the goddess of fortune, but Krishna is always worshipped by many thousands of goddesses of fortune. Dr. Singh To conceive of anyone so fortunate is beyond our thinking capacity. Srila Prabhupada, yes, therefore, Krishna is achintya, inconceivable. We cannot estimate how great or fortunate he is. Achintya means that which we cannot estimate. We can see only a part of God's opulence, this material nature, which is only a partial exhibition of God's potencies. The Supreme Personality has many potencies. He has inferior energies and superior energies. In Bhagavad Gita 7.4, Krishna says, Bhumira po nalo vayu, kammano budhir evacha, ahankarai tiyamme, bhina prakritir ashtada. Quote, Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. All together, these eight comprise my separated material energies." In the next verse of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes his superior energy, Parashakti, which is manifested as the spiritual world. So, if the inferior material energy There are so many wonderful things. Just imagine how much more important and how much more wonderful things are in the spiritual world. This is the meaning of superior. Jai. Yeah, descriptions of the spiritual world are truly fascinating. The next section is called the Mysteries of Yogic Power. Hridayananda Dasa Goswami Are all the varieties of life we see on earth contained in the spiritual world? Srila Prabhupada Yes. And moreover, if in this inferior energies there are so many wonderful varieties of life, just think how wonderful are the superior varieties of life in the spiritual world. Even in the material universe, The inhabitants of some planets are far superior to those on other planets. 
For example, people on earth practice mystic yoga for achieving wonderful powers. But people on the planet called Siddha Loka have these great yogic powers naturally. On earth, it is natural that a bird can fly, but we cannot, except with costly machines. However, on such planets as Siddha Loka, the residents can fly even from one planet to another without machines. They can go to other planets simply at will. Even on Earth, there are some yogis who can take their bath early in the morning in four places at once. Jagannath Puri, Rameshwara, Haridwar and Dwarka. One yogi friend used to visit my father in Calcutta. The yogi told him that when he, the yogi, would simply sit down and touch his guru, he would travel from Calcutta to Dwarka in two minutes. That is yogic power. So what are today's airplanes? Durvasa Muni traveled all over the universe and up to Vaikuntha within one year. According to modern calculations, certain planets in this universe are more than 40,000 light years distant from the Earth. This means, this means it would take 40,000 years to reach these planets if you traveled at the speed of light. Even if they had the means, how could the astronauts live for 40,000 years? So why are they so proud? Dr. Singh, the scientists have a theory that they can produce a machine that will travel at the speed of light. Shla Prabhupada, that is rascaldom. They say that, but they will never be able to do it. Next section, Vedic Cosmology. Shla Prabhupada, there are many invisible planets and stars. For example, when the Rahu planet passes before the sun and the moon, there is an eclipse. But the scientists describe an eclipse differently. Actually, the Rahu planet causes an eclipse. There are many questionable points regarding the modern scientists' theory of the eclipse. Their explanation is incorrect according to Vedic information. Dr. Singh But the scientists say that they can prove their theories. Srila Prabhupada They say that science proves everything. But that is nonsense. The scientist has proved everything except what he is. That he doesn't know. And why does he die? That also he doesn't know. That is the extent of his knowledge. Dr. Singh They can make a model of the universe. They can make a model of the planets and the moon. Srila Prabhupada If they can make things, why don't they make an imitation sun to save electricity? These rascals say everything, but they cannot do anything. That is their position. If they can make a model of the universe, let them make a big model of the sun. Then, in the dark night, we will not have to spend so much money on electricity. But they cannot do it. Yet, they speak big, big words simply to take money from the taxpayers. They say they know the composition of the moon and the composition of the sun so, so why can't they make them? Why can't they create an artificial sun so that the people of Iceland and Greenland can be saved from so much cold? Next section. About the taxpayers, that's a very interesting thing. <laughs> I don't know. I, with all due respect, I also always consider that, you know, so many problems are there in the world, including hungry nations or... Uh, the same global trash <laughs> and all of these problems could actually be solved by the money which are wasted on 
trying to do things that will never be able to be done or which are like a bit useless you know what i mean okay next section god is never zero shila Prabhupada. lord chaitanya mahaprabhu once gave the example of the jewel called chintamani which produces many other jewels while remaining as it is one second Mm-hmm. Om Purnamadah Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate Shri Shopanishad Invocation The meaning of this verse is that although everything emanates from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, He never diminishes. Here on the earth, the petrol is running out, and this is becoming a terrible problem. But the sun is still shining and will continue to shine for an untold number of years. And Krishna can create millions of suns. In fact, he has already done so. But he is still fully potent. He has lost nothing. That is God, and that is the supreme energy of God, Achintya Shakti. We have so, some money to spend, and I want to say we have so much money. <laughs> yeah, we have so much money to spend, but Prabhupada said we have some money to spend, and the next day our account becomes zero. Rascals say that ultimate truth is zero, Shunyavada. They do not know that God is never zero that he is always positive. So we must have a clear idea of God. Theologians should take these ideas from Vedic descriptions and not be misled by fools and rascals. God and his full energies are explained in the Vedic literatures. Our energy is lost, but God's is not. That is the difference between God and us. I cannot walk swiftly or do so many other things that a young man can do, because I have lost my youthful energy. But God is always youthful. Advaitam achyutam anadi anandarupam adhyam purana purusham navayovanam cha Quote Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead is absolute, infallible, and beginningless. Expanded into unlimited forms, he is the original person, the oldest, and always appearing as a fresh youth. Brahma Samhita 5.33 Krishna always says, in Bhagavad Gita 18.61 Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Hridda Tishtati The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart. He is also within every atom. But still he is one. That is God. And he is Advaita, without duality. Not that he is living within your heart and a different personality is living within my heart. No, they are one. God is everywhere by his all-pervasive features. And he is also localized. Yet, he is still one. The next section, the absolute nature of Krishna's love. Dr. Singh In some Western theological literature, Srila Prabhupada, they say that God is love, Srila Prabhupada. God is everything. Why do they say He is this or that? Anything is God because He is absolute. His love and His enmity are the same. In the material world, we distinguish between love and animosity. But God's animosity and God's love are the same thing. 
Therefore, he is called Achintya, or inconceivable. God's love for the gopis and God's enmity for Kamsa achieved the same result. Both Kamsa and the gopis went to the spiritual world. Also Putana came to poison Krishna and Mother Yashoda was always anxious to save Krishna, the naughty child, lest he be harmed. So Mother Yashoda and Putana are opposite, but they both achieved the same results. Krishna thought, I have sucked Putana's breast, so now she is my mother. She must reach the same destination as Yashoda. This is the absolute nature of Krishna's enmity and Krishna's love. Vadantita tatva vidas tatvam yajgyatnam advayam Brahmeti paramatmeti Bhagavan iti shabdhyate Quote Learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non-dual substance Brahman, Paramatma or Bhagavan. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.11 God has his impersonal, all-pervasive feature known as Brahman and his localized Paramatma feature. At the same time, he is Bhagavan, which is his original, personal, transcendental form. The three are different, but the same. This is the nature of God, Achintya Bheda Bheda Tattva, simultaneously one and different. One who has reached the personal conception of Bhagavan has already automatically reached Brahman and Paramatma. They are all Krishna, but there is a difference between them. They are simultaneously one and different. Mm -hmm. So just a small point, when Srila Prabhupada is saying that Putana and Mother Yashoda achieved the same destination. Of course, in other places, like saying Nectar of Devotion, when we will be reading, Shri Prabhupada will never say that in this way we should follow in the footsteps of Putana and be a demoniac witch, right? <laughs> so, when you're glorifying this, this nature of the Lord, that He is so unbiased, He is so impartial, that He is equally merciful to the demons and to the devotees. This is glorifying that aspect. But when we are trying to approach the Lord, just <laughs> uh, so that somebody new would not be confused, when we approach the Lord, of course, we are not trying to encourage His animosity towards us, but rather we are serving Him uh, according to the recommendations and according to the instructions of the Acharyas and they are instructing us to be favorable, to do favorable service. Like this. <laughs> it's called Krishna uh, Anushilanam. Right. Krishna Anushilanam. Mm-hmm. Anya Bilash Tashunyam Gyana Karmadina Vritam Anukuliena Krishna Anukul. This is the thing. Anukuliena Krishna Nushilanam. So we are serving in a favorable way. But the demons, such as it was mentioned Kamsa, it was mentioned Putana Devi. Putana Devi. Now now she is Devi, <laughs> but she was a witch. But uh, the Lord he was so merciful to her. So Hare Krishna. Next and last section. Accepting knowledge from a learned person. So we've we've come to this actually point that we're going to read about. Dr. Singh, Srila Prabhupada, many people have difficulty accepting God. Srila Prabhupada, they are diseased, but they do not want to be treated. If they do not agree to be treated, that is their fault. One who is not Krishna conscious God conscious is a madman. Under the power of the illusory energy, 
the inferior material energy. He talks only nonsense, just like someone haunted by ghosts. You must approach a person who is learned. You must find such a person, a guru, and surrender to him. Then question him, and whatever answers you get from him, you must accept. That is the process of understanding God. Process for understanding God. You must first find the Guru, then you must satisfy him by service and by surrendering unto him. The Guru will explain everything. Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita 4.34. Tadvidhi pranipatena pari prashnina sevaya upadekshyantite gyanam gyanina statva darshanaha. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen. The truth. Haribo! Jai. So we have completed Life Comes From Life. Ah, can't believe it's over. Alright, so we shall begin the next book tomorrow. I will, you will find out tomorrow what book it is. It's a big surprise. So thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description. And we shall see you next time. Hare Krishna.